yes, yes, yes. Um, I will be giving a scripture today. It comes from Zephaniah 3, uh, verse 17. And the word of the Lord says, The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt you over you with loud singing. Our theme is singing. And as uh, many of you may know, um, singing lifts your heart. It brings joy into your life. When you're going through things, you put on a song of praise, you worship the Lord, and immediately, I don't know about you, but I change. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in all thanksgiving, thanking you for this day, a day that we've never seen before. Thanking you for your grace and your mercy to allow he, us to be here. To those online, to those here in, in your presence, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who suffered so and died on the cross that we may live unto eternal life. We come, Father, asking forgiveness for our sins and iniquity, for we all sin and come short of your glory. We praise your holy name, Father. We thank you for bringing us to this point. We ask that you lead, guide, open our hearts and our minds as we receive the word from the pastor as he comes, from um, Reverend McCraw as he gives the word today. Open our ears, Father, open our hearts. Let us use the words that you've given him to bring glory and honor to you. We thank you for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, for all that you will do. For those who are traveling, we ask for traveling mercies. For those, Father, who stand in need, we ask that you supply our need. For those, Father, who just want to say thank you, Lord, for another day, another opportunity to do your will, we say thank you, Lord. We ask these and all blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior.
And some of us are preparing to go into the storm. And we need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to stay, save us. The standard is the standard. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 145, 1 through 7. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and I will exalt your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can phantom. Amen. Please join us as the disciples, me and the disciples of Northside as we sing our opening hymn found on page 457. May faith look to thee. My faith looks up to thee. The Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day be Verse number two. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal inspire as thou hast died for me. Verse number three. While life's dark maze, I tread and grief around me spread. Be thou my guide. In darkness turn to day. Wine sorrows tears away. Number four, when men's lives trends in dream, when death's cold sullen stream shall o'er me roll. Bless Savior then in love, fear and distrust remove. Some God, I will do your will. 
Lord, I come to you this morning, Lord, understanding that we will wait on you. Mm -hmm. Father, nothing else matter during that time, Father, because, Lord, we know that you will bless us. Father, I pray this morning, Lord, for our pastor as he is away, he and Dr. Thomas, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you just continue, Lord, to renew and allow them, Lord, to come back with a spirit, Father, that we cannot even fathom. But then, Father, we ask, Lord, that you touch some situations that's going on around the world, around the country, just here in Maryland, Lord. Lord, I pray for Brother Leslie Noble, Father, who passed out on the football field, Lord, and from cardiac arrest. Father, we ask, Lord, that you touch in his family, Lord, and comfort them, Lord, in this time of need. Father, we know that football is a dangerous sport, Lord. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the preparation and the ability, Lord, for these young men to go out here and give it their all, Father, with dreams of being successful, Lord. Father, we thank you for the discipline of those young men. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the strength and the accomplishments that they'll have just this year. So, Father, I lift up all young men from Pee Wee to the NFL, Lord, that is going through something this year, whether it's a concussion, Lord, whether it's a physical injury of the body, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you watch over them during this time, Father. Father, we know that in due time, Father, all things will be taken care of through you. There are no hands bigger than your hands, Lord. So, Father, we put those issues in your hands, Lord. We put the issues of cancer in your hands, Lord. Father, we put the issue, Lord, of COVID, Lord, this, this new strain in your hands. Because, Father, we know that you can do all things but fail. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you as we go into worship, Father, and just continue to lift up your holy name, Father. Father, you say that where there are two or more gathered in my name, there I'll be in the mess. So, Father, I ask you to come into this place today, Lord. Touch and allow us to agree. And allow us, Lord, just to enjoy Worship in our hearts and in our mind and in our souls, Lord. But then, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the prayer that you've taught your disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And our prayer response is found on page 441. I need thee every hour. Side, I need thee. Good morning, Northside. 
and welcome to this morning's worship here at Northside Baptist Church on Sunday, August the 18th. I welcome you all to Northside Baptist Church. Amen. <clears throat> Do we have any disciples here that thought it was not robbery to bring someone, a visitor, with them? I may ask that you please stand, introduce your visitor, or if your visitor feel comfortable, introducing themselves. We ask that you stay and give a church affiliation if you have one, and if not, hey, look no further. You have one today. Amen. My sister here to the left. Praise the Lord. Yes. I know that's right. Amen. Amen. Welcome. 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 Anyone else? Okay. With that being said, Lord no side, I ask that we state our vision together to let our friends and our visitors know uh, what our vision here at Northside Baptist Church is. Together, Northside Baptist Church is intentional about making and growing disciples and empowering people to live changed lives, amen. And our theme for 2024 is simply walking by faith found in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, amen. Um, our church announcements. <clears throat> I wanna make sure that everyone is still aware that during the summertime we, we do dress down here at Northside Baptist Church, so that's why y'all see us. Um, currently without, you know, our, our Sunday morning best on, to say the least, amen. Today, um, the Glen Oka community will be um, presenting their third annual back to school block party from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Alameda, Alameda Shopping Center at 5600 the Alameda. There will be free school supplies, food, music, games, and prizes, and endless fun. A variety of vendors will be there offering valuable resources and giveaways. I ask that, um, I'm not sure if they have a, a rain date yet, but we all know that rain is on the forecast this afternoon, so I will keep you all posted um, about that. Just give me a call if you have to to find out whether or not it will still be going on. I'll be going there uh, right after church. On Sunday, September the 8th, uh, Northside Baptist Church, We'll be celebrating faithfulness of the music ministry. So I'm calling all men of valor, I'm calling all men of valor um, for this particular Sunday to come and lift up our voices with the women of the choir to be able to sing to the glory of God. Um, so we ask that you all come. I'm not sure of any scheduled uh, rehearsals yet, but. I will keep you all informed on our thread that we all have. So please show up at that time. Thank you. Um, Bible school will continue not to meet in the month of August, but resuming on Wednesday, September the 4th at 12 o'clock p.m. Monday and Wednesday prayer will continue during the month of August, um, starting at 6.45 p.m. And it'll be on our uh, prayer line. The Hand in Hand Women's Ministry prayer calls will take place on Saturday at 10.15 a.m. The dial-in number and access code is in your bulletin. And Sunday School will reconvene also for the children and adults in September. So as of right now, I hear that the adults are still meeting also on um, Sunday for Sunday School, which is you know, you're all privileged, appreciate it. The garden ministry is asking for help. Um, once again, we need the help of the men of valor. We ask that you all come out and help with the garden ministry. We ask that um, they wanna lay down the weed barrier uh, on Saturday, August the 23rd. Um, I will send you all a time that we can be here to help out if you're available. I just need a, uh, to know that like today after at the service, they shared that the harvest for this year will be the last one that will be found in McMillan Hall. 
Yes, yes, yes. Just clap it up. Yes, I agree. If you haven't had an opportunity to see it, it's like a mini, it's like a mini farmer's market in McMillan Hall. We thank the garden ministry, especially um, for all their hard work and dedication. Uh, thank you to their fearless leader, uh, Sister Darlene Armstrong. Let's see. And we just pray that uh, things continue, you know, just as they are next season. And when you all need help, please call on us. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. It's now time to worship God with the giving of God's tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Here at Northside, we have a few different ways that you can, you can give. The first way um, that you can give is electronically through the GiveLify app. Um, you just go to the GiveLify app, look up Northside Baptist Church, and you'll see our awesome pastor picture on there. You can give that way. You can also mail in the tithe, and you can also bring the tithe to the store house. Amen. We have uh, affirmation that we like to say here in, at Northside is our tradition to lift whatever you have to God and repeat after me. Divine love, Divine love. through me, through me. Blesses, and blesses and multiplies this gift. It blesses the receiver, blesses the receiver. and returns to the giver. Bless and multiply. Amen. At this time, I ask that you all stand and follow the directions of the usher. One more time. Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, thankful. We come to you this morning with humble hearts, grateful for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. Father, we thank you for the gifts that we have received this morning, Lord, the gift that will change lives, Father, and encourage people to have changed lives. Mm. But then, Father, we thank you, Lord, for just an opportunity to give, Lord. We thank you for 
the ones who had the heart to give, Father, but may not have had what it take to place. But Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you continue to bless them in a mighty way, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that when we come to give our offering, Father, that we give 10%, Father, but not just 10% of financial needs, Father. We give 10% of ourselves, Lord. Father, we ask, Lord, that we just continue, Lord, to be great stewards of the church. Lord, allow us, Lord, to move here in Northside Baptist Church, Father, as Northside have never seen before. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. And we lift up your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Northside Baptist Church. It's a blessing that we have ministers here at Northside Baptist Church that can fill in the gap in the absence of our pastor. Amen. Today, we present to you all another one of our very own and loved ones here at Northside Baptist Church, Reverend Derek McCraw. <clears throat> one who needs no introduction. So in tradition of Northside Baptist Church, we lift to Reverend McCraw our right hand and repeat after me. Reverend McCraw, Reverend McCraw. preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Reverend, McCraw. Reverend McCraw, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Reverend McCraw, Allow the Lord to use you. Allow the Lord to use you. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you So um, I'll be reading the scripture uh, this morning, and it will be coming out of Luke 10 verses 29 through 37, and after the reading of the scripture, then, and after the music selection from our music ministry, the next voice that you all will hear will be that of our very own Reverend Derek McCraw. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version, and I ask that if you are able, please stand at this time. Thank you. If you need another minute to find, it is Luke 10, verses 29 through 37. And it reads, but wanting to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? 
Jesus replied and said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he encountered a robber and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by coincidence, a priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on the journey came upon him and when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine on them and put, them, put him on his animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, the one who showed compassion to him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do the same. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Amen. You may be seated.
Merciful and everlasting Father, we ask that you open our spirits, our minds, and our hearts to be receptive of a word from you, dear Lord. Father, I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want to thank um, Deacon Lewis for reading that scripture for me. The problem I have is I never have a Bible where the words are big enough for me to see. Amen. When you have a chance to fact check me, go back at this passage and start with verse 25 through 37. I want to use for a subject this morning the seven ups on the Jericho Road. We're not talking about the soda. We're talking about events. A Jewish lawyer asked a good question with a bad motive, not because he wanted to know the answer, but he was hoping to entrap Jesus. The Lord sent him back to Jewish law in the scriptures which says, well, let me go back. He asked the question, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And he was trying to be funny. You know how people ask us questions sometimes? They don't want to know the answer. They already know the answer. They're just trying to catch us in something. Jesus sent him back to the Old Testament scriptures which says, love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The lawyer gave the right answer, but he would not apply it to himself and admit his own lack of love for both God and his neighbor. And trying to wiggle his way out of his predicament, he used an old debate tactic which says, define your terms. Who is my neighbor? What do you mean by my neighbor? Jesus' reply was to tell the story about the Good Samaritan and his travels along the road to Jericho. The Jericho Road was 18 miles long between Jerusalem and Jericho. It dropped 4,000 feet, a mountainous road with narrow, rocky passages, gorges, and blind turns, a place where one could easily be robbed, assaulted, or kill Baltimore and DC. A man was walking along this road on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers who robbed and stripped him of his belongings. And not being content with just stealing, they physically assaulted him and left him on the road to die. So we see on this road a man who was beat up. Some of us have been beat up not by fists, but by the trials and tribulations of life. Beat up by greedy, lying politicians. Beat up by conspiracy theories, misinformation, hate, racism, high cost of living, broken promises, and by false, greedy, misleading church preachers and pastors who rob us blind with their minds on their money and the things that they own. Some of us have been beat up so bad that we feel not only beaten, but left on the road of life to die. And as he lay on this road dying, a priest happened by and seeing the man in need elected to keep walking and not help him. Likewise, a Levite coming behind the priest opted to do the same thing. And so we see a man beat up now being passed up. In a modern context, I would have to say it's a shame when church leadership, the pastor, the preacher, and the deacons pass up an opportunity to help somebody in need. Likewise, it's sad when church folks follow the leaders and also pass up the opportunity to help others. Some of us are so bad that in this day of easy and quick communication, many of us won't even pick up a phone or use our cell phones to call someone 911 and ask for help. I remember a situation when my youngest daughter was still in a stroller in a high chair, and we went to a restaurant, I think it was IHOP, and all hell broke loose. 
A customer came in, started fighting with the cashier. The cashier and the service started fighting the customers. The manager came out and started fighting with everybody else. And nobody bothered to call somebody to come break this thing up. We had children in there, and there was a couple beside us, uh, two females with little children. Instead of calling for help, they called their friends and gave them a play-by-play -play of the fight. Like the priest and the Levite, religious folks don't care or are too busy to help another person out. So after being passed up by the priest and the Levite, the religious people, along comes a Samaritan, an everyday common man, who was also risking his life by walking on this road because Jews did not like Samaritans. So not only did he have to deal with robbers and thieves, he would have to deal with people who were discriminatory against him. But he did not let this stop him. He had pity on this man that he saw, and he took the time to help him by tending to his wounds, using oil and wine to soothe the pain, stop the bleeding, and bandage his wounds. So we see a man who was passed up now being patched up. Many of us, after being beat up by the state things in life and passed up by those unwilling to help us, are in need of being patched up. When we have a God and we have a Lord and Savior who's willing to take the time to patch us up when we've been injured by the things that we're going through or the things that we have gone through. After patching the victim up, the Samaritan put the man on his animal. So now we see one who has been picked up and <coughs> now being, excuse me, patched up, now being picked up. Some of us have fallen down in some things, but we ought to give thanks to God that we have a Savior who will pick us up when we've fallen down. We've all been knocked down at some point, and sometimes when we stand up, we get wobbly and in the fear of falling down again. But not only will Jesus pick us up, he will prop us up on every leaning side. He said, come unto him all who labor and are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. After being picked up and put on the man's animal, the Samaritan, the common man, took the injured man to an inn where he could take care of him even further. So we see a man being put up. The Samaritan not only stayed for a while to help the man, but when he had to leave, he ensured that this man would have continuous care in his absence by giving the innkeeper money to look after him. So we see a man beat up by robbers, passed up by the religious folks, packed up, picked up, and put up, now being paid up. Jesus, through his sacrificial death, paid the price for those of us who were once sinners headed for eternal separation from God, but we now are saved by grace through faith. The songwriter wrote, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left its crimson stain, but he washed me white as snow. And there's another song that says, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. When sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all, not just some, all their guilty stain. After paying the innkeeper, the Samaritan told him that he would come back to settle any further debt that he owed. So we see a man that was beat up by robbers, passed up by religious leaders and the church folks, patched up, picked up, put up, paid up, and now he's given a promise of a follow-up. I don't know about you, but whenever I get beat up by the storms of life, I call on somebody who understands the common man. He understands because he was born of a virgin named Mary. He understands because he was lied on, beat on, spat on, and hung on a cross to die. He understands because they put him in a borrowed tomb. They thought they had gotten rid of Jesus, but early one Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands, and one day he's going to follow up and will be caught up to meet him in the hair. Yes, one of these mornings, and it won't be long. You're gonna look for me, and I'll be gone. 
a place I'll go with nothing to do but walk around heaven all day. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. Won't be nobody there to put me out. I'm going to walk, walk, walk around heaven all day. When you're down and out and on your Jericho Road, Jesus will pat you up. He will pick you up. He will pay you up. He will follow up. Call on the one who promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Is there anybody here that's ever been down on your Jericho Road, but you call on Jesus and he made a way out of no way. You ought to give him praise, give him glory. Say yes, 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 yes. yes. doors of the church are open. If you're a person who doesn't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we offer you that opportunity now. Our invitation to him is, pass me not, O gentle Savior. If you're a Christian without a church home and you found that this may be the place that you want to be, we invite you also. Yeah, that 
la sé, sé, hey, Dios, y my amuka, my amuka, my amuka, my amuka, my amuka, Northside, we have a new disciple in Northside Baptist Church. Let's give a clap. Yes. It's always good to me sitting up and actually looking into the congregation and noticing, you know, visitors coming from week to week and, you know, how often they come and they checking us out, you know what I mean, which is great, you know, because you should always look into a church before you join a church, right? and find out if that is the place for you, you know. So we are glad here at Northside Baptist Church as Reverend McCrawden preached this off about getting beat up, passed up, patched up, put up, paid up, and followed up, you know. Not only did he put him in a place, but he went back and checked on him, you know. So that's the type of people we hear at Northside. You'll get those random phone calls. You'll get those random cards from people for birthdays and different things and just from their heart. And I just heard today as we were, were meeting earlier in our morning prayer that people are happy when they go out for medical reasons and different things and a deacon checks up on them, you know, and just call just to see how you're doing. You know, hey, you need anything? What's going on with you? It's, it's that spirit here that the leader, our shepherd, Walter L. Parrish III has placed into all of us. You know, I can, I can remember real quick that when my daughter was born, you know, I, I see someone walk past the room, Because right? I guess he didn't realize that was the room we were in. And he was just coming, you know, to check on me and my wife for my daughter, you know. And I'm sure we all have stories about that. But we have a new disciple here. And like I said, I know she's been checking us out because I've seen her and she's seen us, you know. <laughs> Sister Dora V. Pr um, Bryce, coming to us by way of Christian experience. Let's give a clap. Dora. Amen. Amen. Amen, Sister Dora. Thank the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> There's something here that we do at Northside Baptist Church. We just have a couple of questions. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that he died for our sins? Yes. And do you believe that... God raised him from the dead. Yes. That's all we need to know. Amen. 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 I'm calling Savior. Sorry. Savior. Hear my humble cry. Amen. Can you all stand as we get prepared to be dismissed? Before we close, um, Tuesday, this is when you realize there is a God. <laughs> My wife and I celebrated 36 years of marriage. <laughs> there were friends of mine that didn't think I'd get past a week. But I asked that you pray for us because we went out of town, we went to an amusement park, and I cannot get her in 36 years to get on a roller coaster with me. <laughs> I'm glad to see my youngest daughter. I was telling um, Deacon Lewis that when she was younger, people used to always say, did you see your daughter when you were preaching? I said, no. I said, she was mocking you something fierce. <laughs> I haven't caught her yet. And how she was able to even do it outside of the cameras, I don't know. 
and I thank God for her and as well as my other two daughters. If all hearts and minds are clear, Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Now, Father, we ask that grace, truth, mercy, and peace from God our Father rest, rule, and abide with you now and henceforth and forevermore. Let the people of God say, Amen. <laughs> Storm out on the ocean.